In this video, we'll show you how to install an aftermarket HD 9813SG Stage 3 on a 2008 Street Glide. Hey everyone, I'm Eric, and we'll get started by removing the battery terminals. You never want to work on any electronics with the battery connected. Start by using a number two Phillips to remove the seat and a T40 Torx to move the ECU cradle out of the way. Once you have access, you can use a 10 millimeter socket or Phillips screwdriver to disconnect the battery terminals. Now we're ready to remove the fairing. First, we'll install the service cover on the fender. Then we'll use a T27 Torx driver to remove four bolts on the inside, two of which are located in between the forks. Then we'll remove the three Torx bolts that hold the visor in place. Now, it's best to have two people during this step. One to hold the fairing in position and the other to remove the screws. Once we pull down on the fairing, we'll disconnect any headlight harnesses and remove it from the bike. Now that we have that done, we're ready to remove the gas tank. We'll start off by disconnecting the main gas line. Push up on the hose and slide the collar upward, then pull down the gas line. Next, disconnect the two breather lines in the back and detach any harnesses. Note that these may be zip tied underneath. Once that's done, use a half inch socket to remove the two bolts in the back of the gas tank. Then move up to the front and detach the plastic cover to remove the two bolts. Once you remove the gas tank, you can finish by using a plastic pry tool to remove the center trough cover. Now we're ready to remove our speakers. We'll start by detaching the fairing crossbars using a 3 16th Allen wrench and a Phillips screwdriver. Next, remove the factory speakers by disconnecting the speaker wires. Note that white is positive and black is negative. Then we'll switch to a T25 Torx to remove three screws from the speaker and carefully remove it. On our motorcycle, we have aftermarket speakers installed, so we'll use a number two Phillips to remove both the speaker and the crossover. Once you're done, repeat the process on the other side. Now we're ready to install our new speakers. Be sure to use the included hardware that accommodates the slightly different mounting depth of the new speaker's bezel. Position the speaker with the logo facing down and the thick bezel facing up. Insert the two longer screws into the top of the speaker and secure them in place using a number two Phillips. Using the shorter screw, attach the bracket and finish securing the speaker. Once you're done, repeat the process on the other side. Now we're ready to install our power harness. Take the power connector side of our harness and run it up the clutch side to the amplifier location where it will be mounted on the top of the source unit. Verify that there's enough slack to make our battery connections. Now for our bag lid harness, we'll route the connector labeled speaker rear up the brake side to the amplifier location. We'll finish by routing the harness on the right side of the channel and resting the remaining slack near the battery. All right, let's take a moment to explain the harnesses included in our Street Glide kit. There are several wiring harnesses, so let's break them out. This is the front input cable used to connect the audio from our factory harness to the amplifier. 
This is the front output cable used to connect our speakers to the amplifier. Now, there are some additional cables included. If you have a tour pack, you'll use this to tap into the factory wiring and power the speakers. Finally, the rear radio harness is used to get the rear audio from the radio and connect the amplifier to our baglid speakers. We've also included two Y adapters. These go on the front and rear output channels of the amplifier. This allows you to add additional speakers to the amplifier in the future. In the amplifier installation kit, you'll notice multiple brackets. This is the main amplifier mounting bracket. This one is for installing into a bat wing fairing. And this one is for shark nose fairings. Now we're ready to prep our amplifier for installation. We'll use the small L bracket, heat sink, and two flush mount screws from our amp mounting kit. Position the heat sink upside down with the heat sink fins facing you and the L bracket with the Diamond R logo facing down. We'll use a two millimeter Allen to secure two of the flush mount screws into the 9813 street light holes. We'll flip the assembly over and secure our amplifier in place using four button head screws using a 2.5 millimeter Allen of the amplifier. This allows you the additional Now we're ready to tune our amplifier. We offer this amp tuning guide that's available in the description of this video and through this kit's product details page at rockfordfosgate.com. There are three options for tuning the amplifier based on the radio that you're using. To get started, use the included Allen wrench to remove the smoke cover. Then use a small flathead screwdriver to make any adjustments necessary on the amplifier. Now that you have your amplifier tuned, let's take a moment to describe all three mounting options. We have a PMX radio, the factory Harman radio, and an aftermarket radio. On the PMX radio, we removed two screws from the back to attach our amplifier assembly. On our factory radio, we removed the same two screws to attach the amplifier. Finally, on an aftermarket radio, we suggest using double-sided tape to secure the assembly to the top of the sheet metal. In this scenario, the L bracket is optional. All right, now we're ready to install the amplifier. To get started, we use a small flathead screwdriver to detach two of the factory wiring connectors. Then we'll use a T10 Torx to remove two screws from the back of the source unit and secure the amp assembly on top. Now we're ready to wire our amplifier. We'll take the front input cable, noting white is positive and black is negative, and connect the right side input to the right factory terminals, and the harness labeled left side input to the left factory terminals. Once you're done, connect the Molex into the amplifier's front input. Next, connect both Y adapters to the front output and the rear output harnesses. Then, connect the front output cable into one of the Y adapters on the amplifier's front output. Connect the cable labeled right side output to the right speaker, noting red is positive and black is negative. Then finish by connecting the cable labeled left side output to the left speaker. Once you're done with that, attach the 35 pin rear radio harness into the back of the source unit and connect the Molex end into the amplifier's rear input. Finally, connect the rear bag lid harness to the Y adapter on the amplifier's rear output connector.
Once you're done with that, plug the power connector into the amplifier, noting the blue turn on wire is not used in this configuration. All right, now that we got most of the wiring completed in the fairing, let's take a second to clean up using the provided zip ties. With batwing fairings, we need to get the cables tucked up as far under as possible to allow for reinstallation of the fairing. All right, now we're ready to prepare our bag lids for speaker installation. To get started, we'll use a T25 Torx to remove the fabric hinge so we don't damage it during the cutting process. Next, we'll place a bin liner inside the bag to catch all the plastic shavings. Then use 3M masking tape to cover the top of the bag lid so we don't scratch the paint. Next, we'll position our template on top, making sure the front lip of the template is sitting firmly against the ridge of the bag lid. Then mark the two pilot holes on top. Remove the template and use a 1 8 inch drill bit to pre-drill the holes. Then secure the template in place using a number two Phillips and the small screws provided in the kit. Note, this kit is only compatible with factory Harley-Davidson plastic saddlebags. Early fiberglass saddlebags are not compatible. Now that we have that done, we're ready to cut our saddlebag lids. We we'll use the 5 16 bit to drill our pilot holes. Then using a reciprocating saw with a fine tooth blade, we'll start cutting, being careful to follow along the template while staying within the guides. To maintain accuracy, do not cut the adjoining segments yet until the template guides are all done. This will avoid fitment issues, especially at the corners. Okay, let's take a moment to do some cleanup. We'll start by examining our cutouts by using a file to make sure there are no burrs around the edges. Test fit the grill to make sure it fits properly on the bag lid. Then remove the masking tape and bin liner containing the plastic shavings. Once you're completely done, we'll repeat the process on the other saddlebag. Now that we have that done, we're ready to install our speakers. We'll open the bag lid and position the mounting ring and grill in place to make sure that they're properly aligned. The grill goes on the outside and our mounting ring on the inside. This is where we'll sandwich them together to the bag lid. Using a number two Phillips, secure four of the smaller screws supplied in the kit. Now be careful not to over tighten these. Once that's done, we'll align the speaker and basket protector assembly with the speaker terminals facing toward the rear of the bike and secure it to the mounting ring from the inside using four long button head screws with the built-in washer. Once you're done, repeat the process on the other side. Now we're ready to drill the holes for the wiring harness and grommet. You'll need to remove the saddlebags and both service covers using the two quick releases. Then we'll measure approximately four and a half inches down from the front of the bag's quick release and three and a half inches from the side. This ensures that the harness is kept away from any moving parts. We'll need a three quarter inch hole for the installation of the wiring grommet. 
We'll start with the drill bit and switch to a step up bit to increase the hole to the appropriate size. Once that's done, repeat the process on the other side. Now we're ready to run our harnesses to the saddlebags. The harness is labeled clutch side and brake side. On the brake side, we'll route our cable down the front of the battery pocket and follow the existing electrical harness around the rear frame. The clutch side can easily route through the service panel and exit toward the rear shock. Now make sure you have enough room to insert the grommet into the bag without any excess slack. Once you're done, zip tie your harness along the frame and replace both service covers. Okay, now we're ready to reinstall our saddlebags and finish wiring them. To get started, we'll position our bag in place and insert the grommet into the 3 quarter inch hole. Once you have the grommet seated, double check that the harness doesn't interfere with your drive belt or any moving parts. Then finish securing the bag in place. Locate the speaker harness pigtail and connect the red wire to the positive terminal, marked with the red dot, and the black to the negative terminal. Then plug the connector into the main harness. Use the included zip ties, zip tie mounts, and retainer clips to help keep your wiring out of the way. We've also included some replacement warning stickers for installation inside your bags. Once you're done, repeat the process on the other side. Now we can start to reassemble and make our battery connections. We'll clean up our wiring, reinstall the center trough, install our gas tank, and make our battery connections. Now we're ready to test and tune the system. Refer to your tuning guide for testing procedures and make any adjustments as needed. Now that everything is working properly, let's finish reassembling your motorcycle and get it back out on the road. As you can see, that install was pretty straightforward. If you prefer a professional do the install for you, we have a network of authorized Rockford Fosgate dealers that can be found on our website. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact our technical support. They can be reached Monday through Friday at 1-800-669-9899 or through live chat at the bottom of our website at rockfordfosgate.com. I'm Eric, and we'll see you again soon.